welcome uh, to everyone. There are already participants that are increasing exponentially. Uh, today, uh, tonight, we expect actually to have many, many uh, participants and many will arrive uh, along the way. And uh, I think that we can, we can even start. So we start at least with the presentation. So good evening. First, I would like to introduce my co-host, that is Pier Giorgio Trev Trevisan. Pier Giorgio is Associate Professor in English Language and Translation at the University of Trieste. Correct, Pier Giorgio? That's correct. Thank you. Pier Giorgio, have mercy on us because <laughs> our English is very basic. At least okay. for me and Margherita, the level is uh, the dog is under the table. Under the table, okay. <laughs> this okay. is the level, okay? So, okay. <laughs> Second, the ladies first, of course, um, Margherita Pelasquier, sail, sailor and copywriter, a woman that is able to navigate the seas, but also to surf on the web and belonging to a dynasty of sailors. Margherita, welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Guido. Good afternoon, everybody. And last but not least, uh, sailor, winner and world record holder of ocean crossing competitions, ufficiale del merito, uh, dell'ordine al merito of the Italian Republic, uh, honored by the great president Carlo Azzelio Ciampi, honored also with the Legion d'honneur for saving the sailor Isabel Otissier, and from tonight, honored guest also of the Innova Mare project, we have Giovanni Soldini. Welcome, Giovanni. Thank you very much. Good night to everybody. <laughs> no, good, wait a minute, not good night. Uh, good night, maybe. <laughs> <Good afternoon. laughs> we we'll say, we'll say it later. Okay, Pierre, what are the rules of the game for tonight? Can you remind okay, us? Yes. So rules of the game are, of course, all uh, uh, the people at home uh, are muted, so they cannot use microphones. And of course, they cannot use the, the webcam. So you can just follow us, however, you are um, warmly and kindly welcome to ask questions uh, through the chat. We always keep uh, the, ch the, the chat controlled. So please go there, write whatever questions you might want to ask and we'll ask these questions for you. Okay, so we will wait. We will be waiting for your questions. Okay, good, good one. Okay, I would say Pierre, if you agree that we start again with, uh, with Margherita. Yeah, yeah, I'll sure. make I'll make the first question to, to okay. Margarita. Okay, okay sure. Margarita, tonight we talk about sailing and rubbish, but sailing is not just a sport. Sailing is also a, a lifestyle. So my first question is for you, and it's also my curiosity is, how do you approach sailing? What, what does sailing mean to you? Listen, Guido, uh, when I was still in my mother's womb, my parents uh, sailed in a fin, in a small dinghy. And they told me that um, when uh, they took me home from the hospital, there were black bora. <laughs> ah, the, black bora the, the black bora. The black bora is bora. a very strong bora, right? The black bora. <laughs> si, si, si. Then I think it was destiny that I lived between sea and wind. Initially, I got to know sailing as a competitive sport because everyone in Pelasquer family raced both. My dad used to take me with him on his work trips and I saw him racing. I followed him from the land and the dimension of the journey immediately fascinated me. When I grew up, I had uh, the opportunity me too to take part in some regatta. But I soon realized uh, the small regatta is not enough. I prefer a long voyage. The feeling when you are in the middle of the sea is like you are entering in a parallel dimension to life ashore. It was great to travel by sea, meeting new people, visiting new city. I was a teenager and they were incredible experience. At sea, I experienced freedom, but with the discipline and attention necessary to navigate safely for both uh, people and the boat. It was a school of life for me. Sailing, the perception of time changes, and we must also adjust uh, to the slowness of some time of boat. I don't think it's uh, the case of Gioga Giovanni, Giovanni Suan, no? <laughs> we will ask, we will ask, no worries, we will ask. <laughs> so sailing is, is part actually of your, of course, of your family, of your life, 
And uh, but uh, these, you know, this uh, uh, webinar has been organized from a, a project that is an Italy-Croatia project. So uh, my second question for you is: uh, there is a favorite sailing spot that you have among uh, Italy and Croatia in the Adriatic Sea? Consider, Margherita, that I'm not able to, to, to sail at all, but Pier Giorgio is. Pier Giorgio is. So maybe you can also provide some, you know, suggestions for him. Great, great. Yeah. <laughs> or you can, you, you can confirm you if it's true. Yeah. It, it is difficult to choose only just one spot. Certainly on the Croatian coast, a city I'm fond of is Fasana, from which the Pelasquer family originates. Oh, but I okay. also love sailing between the, the island of uh, Corsula or Mliet uh, or arriving in Dubrovnik by sea. It's great. Mm. There are pleasant. Ulka. What's happening? Mm. Or I love uh, to sail in Trieste, where I was born. For example, Barcolana is always an appointment uh, not to be missed. I had also the opportunity to race in Venice. Thinking about the whole history of the city is a unique experience. For the same reason, I like to arrive in Ravenna. Uh, other coastal towns uh, that I remind me of beautiful sailing are San Benedetto del Tronto or Trani, where there is a splendid cathedral that can be seen uh, from ah, the yeah. sea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is, it is, it is correct. And uh, you mentioned the Barcolana, and uh, and now it's time to move. Uh, uh, to Giovanni, that uh, maybe Giovanni, I don't know, that, then I will pass, of course, uh, uh, to, to, to Pier Giorgio, but navigating the Barco, have, have you ever navigating a bar navigated the Barcolana? Because I think that for you, navigating the Barcolana is like swimming in a small, you know, swimming pool for kids, if you are a, a swimmer or not. <laughs> no, no. A swimmer. <laughs> <clears throat> no, no, I don't think so. I think uh, sailing is always good no matter what kind of sailing you do. I love sailing with a cruising boat. I love sailing with a fast uh, racing boat. I love a uh, uh, short race or long race. And uh, it's just uh, like you said before, is a, is a way of life. And I think there is many different way uh, to sailing and any of, uh, of this way are very nice for me. So I sail in the Barcolana, I think, two or three times. Not really for... Ooh. We lost... Uh... I don't know how... To uh, here you are, here you are, here you are. Here you are. We lost you for a second. We lost you for a second. <clears throat> um, so I, I just love uh, sailing and the Barcolana for me was a great experience and... Was, was a great party, <laughs> let's say. <laughs> Giovanni, can I, can I uh, congratulate, first of all, on your recent victory at the Rolex uh, Middle Sea race that we all followed? Hmm? Yeah, how, thank how you very was, much. Huh? Was, uh, it was a really tough race. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, you saw, if you follow the race, you know that we, we was fighting, uh, uh, really, really closely with our enemy, and uh, on board uh, this trimaran uh, was uh, an English crew who is very, very good and very high level. And so we are very happy that finally we we was Maybe. able to win. <laughs> yeah. Giovanni, uh, how many days a year do you spend or do you keep your feet on the ground? So how many days are you actually? Uh, on the ground but let's say normally in the normal years I spend probably home in Italy maybe two or three months oh. and the rest of the time uh, is not uh, always at sea but maybe is with the boat so some sometime with the boat in a in a, in a yard uh, in the mm. land uh, to, to, you know, to take care of the boat and to fix it and to do a uh, mountain uh, job. Magra and... River, <laughs> I, saw, I saw you on Magra River yesterday. Yeah, exactly. For example, this year we are lucky because we are uh, making uh, 
a, a big uh, big yard, but uh, we decided to do it in Italy and uh, just under my home <laughs> in the Magra River because I live in Sarzana, in Santo Stefano Magra. Yeah. And so we are all here. But for example, last October, we was in Hawaii to, for one month and a half to fix the boat and to prepare the boat for wow. the for the next navigation, you know, because wow. basically with Maserati, we, 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 we had, um, we went around the world two times in three years wow. with this boat. And so yeah. the boat is always moving around. Oh, that's the picture with Lorenzo Gianotti. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that was <laughs> Hong Kong last year. Ah. And, uh, and so basically yeah. uh, where we are, we each, each uh, four or six months we stop and we... And, and Giovanni, we, I think okay. the question everybody would love to ask you is this, when, when was it that you actually understood that sailing uh, could become a job and not just a hobby, not just a passion, but a job? When did you understand? When was it in your life? At which stage? Uh, pretty soon. <laughs> I was very young and I started to dream uh, uh, to voyage. First, yeah. uh, the first uh, imp input was really uh, that I, I, I was sure that I want to spend my life to, to go around uh, the world and to meet uh, different people in different country. And, uh, and then I, I thought that sailing boat was the, the perfect way because basically uh, you don't need gasoline, you don't need uh, uh, diesel and, and you can go very far and, uh, and you, are, you are very... Uh, self uh, self efficient i mean you are you are alone with yourself and you are able to to do uh, what you need to do to arrive in, in the other side of the world yeah and um, and so i start uh, to to sail a lot and to build boats so how, to... how old were you how old were you were you in your were you a teenager i was like 15 years old 15 years old wow, wow. yeah Beautiful. Okay, thank you. So, uh, Guido, maybe we can. Well, Pier uh, Giorgio, listen, we, we have a fantastic picture of Giovanni. Uh, you know, look at this. <laughs> he, I saw that. Yeah. In the, only, in the only week that he has his feet in the ground uh, in a fantastic <laughs> car, that is also my dream. Maybe one day. <laughs> uh, it's, it's also my dream. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> both dream. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Giovanni. Very. Very, very interesting thoughts. Uh, back to Margherita now. Margherita, uh, as we said at the beginning, at the end, uh, you, you belong also to a sailor's uh, dynasty. So can you tell us a little bit about your recent experience uh, um, with the One uh, Ocean Foundation that actually involved not you directly, but uh, it involved your father, uh, Mauro, that maybe is also watching us. Le le who knows? And... Uh, if you can uh, tell us what did you learn and also also what your father learned about such experience. But uh, before, before uh, um, discussing that, uh, Pierre, I would like to ask you if you can put in play this short video um, produced by the One Ocean Foundation. Exactly that. Let's watch it. It's just a minute and 50, but it is extremely interesting. Life began in the ocean. And without the ocean, all life might end. And yet, the oceans are threatened today as they never have been before, inundated every year by enormous quantities of rubbish, paper, wood, metal and endless tons of plastic, all originating from the land and slowly breaking up into the salt water until they become tiny 5 millimeter particles known as microplastics. Every year, these particles lead to the death of birds, mammals, turtles and fish. In one way or another, they damage all marine life, from the minuscule krill to the great predators, eventually affecting us through the food we consume. By 2050, there could be more plastic than fish in the ocean. At the same time, we must face the challenge of climate change. The oceans cover 70% of the Earth's surface. They carry heat from the equator to the poles. They regulate the climate and provide the water that we drink. 
As the surface temperature of the oceans rises, hurricanes and flooding will occur more frequently. As the amount of greenhouse gases released into the atmosphere increases, more carbon dioxide is absorbed into the water, in turn leading to greater acidity in our oceans. This acidity is a very serious threat to the planet, just as serious as global warming and with unpredictable consequences to the food chain and the well-being of the oceans and even the human race. Protecting the oceans means acting now to safeguard our present and our future. That's why we like the Plu economy. It focuses on research, innovation and technology to transform our methods to produce, distribute and consume. Innovative solutions in maritime operations, transports and financial instruments. We can meet these challenges. We can create new sustainable work opportunities in a maritime industry worth $3,000 billion a year. But we can only protect what we understand, appreciate and love. This is the aim of ocean literacy. There are researchers, educators, communicators and volunteers. We all have an important task to understand how the oceans influence our lives and how we influence the life of the oceans. To take care of the oceans is to take care of ourselves. So, uh, really, really nice. And before going uh, back to the question, Margarita, I wanted to remember two important things. That yesterday we had uh, some astronauts, uh, Umberto Guidoni and uh, NASA uh, scholars uh, that told us um, about how the problem of uh, sea pollution is uh, targeted also by NASA researchers because it is an extremely serious problem. And actually this morning, we in a uh, tech meeting during uh, this morning, we talked about a possible technological solution to solve the problem, uh, let's say since the origin. In this case, this morning, for example, we were analyzing technologies for stopping the plastic to arrive to the sea through uh, mobile barriers that are able to separate the plastic from water in the rivers. And there are already solutions that are applied by Italian researchers in South America and in China that are extremely, extremely interesting. But going back to our question, Margarita, so uh, my question was actually about uh, uh, your experience and uh, your father's experience about the foundation and what can we learn from such experience? The collaboration of my father and uh, One Ocean Foundation, created by Yacht Club Costa Meralda, began in 2018 uh, when uh, the, the foundation was uh, created. And, um, and my father, after spending uh, his whole life racing and sailing, was motivated to promote the preservation and respect uh, of this important element. But uh, how does he do it? Uh, how, ca how can we do it? Uh, by speaking to young people uh, in yachting club or in school, um, meeting the representative of the institution to raise awareness on the problem and invite them to change the habits uh, toward the different uh, cautions. During the same summer, um, the summer of 2018, uh, my dad uh, took part in a restoration and had to transfer a beautiful wooden boat built in 1966. Crivitsa, same name of a nice day in, <laughs> in Croatia. <laughs> um, the boat has to arrive from Trieste to La Spezia. So uh, he decided to take advantage of this voyage uh, to spread his important message. He did a circumnavigation of Italy that uh, lasted uh, three months about and uh, he stopped in 13 maritime cities. A conference meeting with the institution and the cleaning of the beaches with the members of local yacht club were organized for each city he reached. A real traveling campaign. In addition to the crew uh, with my father, there were also mar marine biologists on board who performed uh, water tests. It emerged, uh, unfortunately, that microplastic pollution is widespread and serious everywhere, even in waters that uh, at first glance uh, seems uh, crystalline. Of course, the, the sea is more polluted than near large city or rivers that flow into the sea, dragging the pollution from the city. 
it was a very important experience for my dad. And, and it inspired me, uh, show me a path uh, that I will try to follow because I'm a person, a sailor, and also a mother. mother I yeah. would like uh, a better future for my daughter and I hope for all the children in the world. I think everybody can do something, small things uh, that all together can create uh, new habits, uh, new a way of living closer to, to nature as it is uh, in sailing for us. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, actually, tomorrow evening we will host also um, Andrea Ildi, but also Marco Frey. Marco Frey is a colleague of mine from Santana Pisa, and he's also in the scientific committee of the One Ocean Foundation. That is a foundation that actually is tackling the problem of um, oceans and sea pollution. And uh, what we have heard in the video is really shocking. By two, 2050, the risk is to have more plastic than fish, uh, than fish uh, in, the, uh, in the sea. And uh, this morning we heard uh, another shocking data that uh, um, about 50% of mussels that we eat uh, are already affected by microplastics. So every time we eat mussels, we, we must be aware that unfortunately we are eating also an amount of plastic that is, uh, that is um, considerable. I think at a recent study uh, calculated that the amount of plastic that we eat uh, Every, every week correspond to the one of the, of the credit card. And every week we eat a credit card uh, while uh, drinking, simply drinking water, for example, or eating, or eating fish. And that's really, that's really uh, astonishing. Pierre, your turn. Yeah, so um, Giovanni, going back to the Rolex Middle Sea Race 2020, uh, you were talking about that before. So yeah, I just wanted to ask you, what did you find, let's say harder than usual, if there were like harder uh, parts? And uh, apart from the race, I also wanted to ask you if how you found the conditions of the, of the Mediterranean Sea, how, how, what conditions did you find there? Uh, Pier Giorgio, I forgot to mention that Giovanni sent us also a video. I don't know if we want to see it maybe now, Giovanni. I can play it uh, okay. and then we can, we can comment. No, maybe Is we it... can play the video first. Maybe first of all, we can play Giovanni's video. Okay, okay. Yeah. so yeah. Okay. Thanks. Um, you, should, you should see the video right now. Yeah. I will try to keep okay. the volume at the minimum. Sure. Here it is. It's very short, but really interesting. Two minutes. There is a problem in your computer or in my phone. Do you see the video, guys?
Well, amazing, amazing yeah. images, really amazing this images. Stunning, this is stunning. Um, Giovanni, uh, I also know, can, can you hear me now? Yeah? Yes, yes. Okay. No, it's just the video was going not fluently. Ah, the video was a little, okay. Um, anyway, uh, I also read somewhere that you won by 16 minutes with, you know, with the, your twin boat, right? Was it 16 minutes or 11 minutes difference? Yeah, something like 15 minutes, yeah. 15 minutes. We was very, very close all the way until Lampedusa and then in just, until Lampedusa we was like at less than half mile each other. Each other was crazy. Oh, wow. So you could Big see each other side. all the time. Very nice. Yeah. Like, like the Giro d'Italia, Pier Giorgio, like the Giro d'Italia on the last exactly. stage. Exactly. And so, Giovanni, what can you tell us about the conditions of the sea? Uh, if, if, if you saw anything strange there. But you know, condition, of it's, course. it's very difficult to say, uh, I mean, the condition of the sea are uh, uh, bad or, or, or yeah. better. Yeah. The point is, uh, we know very well plastic is all over in all the ocean okay and Mediterranean is not uh, is not safe at all oh. uh, so for sure we when I was child I was sailing in the Mediterranean it was nearly impossible to see a piece of plat plastic floating around okay and today it's normal oh. and uh, the problem is the plastic is uh, accumulate all the time and so you can see today a piece of plastic was uh, in the in the, was uh, was probably used uh, 10 years ago 20 years ago ah, okay and so the problem is uh, is, is the situation is is not going better it's going uh, is worse is, is worse. going worse. more more and more uh, in, to, to a disaster, especially if you think that the 70, more than 70% of plastic is basically not floating. Ah, it's under the sea. Down in the sea. And uh, in these three years, I, I spend uh, a lot of time uh, uh, sailing around and uh, we saw, for example, in the Pacific Ocean, in the China Sea, in, incredible, uh, terrific um, situation mm. with uh, really plenty, plenty of stuff in the sea. Which is the part of the world? Which is the part of the world that has got more, let's say, problems or issues with plastic? I, like I tell you before, we think that Mediterranean maybe is safe, but it's not true at all. Excellent. The point is. Uh, uh, we uh, <clears throat> in Mediterranean, obviously, people maybe clean more the beaches, mm. uh, maybe the, because it's a business, you know, the beaches yeah. in Italy, we sure. need them to, to, to have the tourists and uh, to rent the place to, to put the chair and the umbrella. But, <laughs> <laughs> so, but if you go in a, in a beach uh, in Italy, in, in, in Viareggio, like yeah. in Germany, where when nobody cleaned the beach, you can find thousands of stuff that come from the sea. And so basically the, 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 the problem concern all the global yeah. sea. Giovanni, I want to interrupt yeah. you. I need to interrupt you because next question, but not now, like in five minutes from now, will be thinking of a personal and of a symbolic, let's say, event that you experienced during your sailing with sea pollution, okay? So think about that now, so you have some time to think about that. And meanwhile, we go back to Margherita, okay? We thank you, thank you, thank you, Giorgio. Just uh, to invite all people that are uh, attending our seminar to use the chat, to yeah, use the chat. questions to Margherita and Giovanni. If Giovanni cannot see the questions from the phone, maybe we can uh, read uh, the questions uh, to, to Giovanni at the end, but take this opportunity because it's really a quite unique opportunity. And something that I wanted to add on top of that, Pierre, is that uh, 
this morning we saw images from Dubrovnik and uh, the quantity of plastic that is coming from Italy and Albania on the coast of Dubrovnik. Yeah. It's incredible. It's incredible. There are tons and tons of plastic arriving there every, every year, every year. And there is actually uh, not much that, uh, that, uh, that they can do, that they can do. Uh, and uh, thank you also for suggesting this, because my last question for uh, Margherita is actually the same that you were proposing to Giovanni. If there is a, a precise, a specific moment in which you were sailing and that uh, you realize that the health of our sea is really uh, compromised, if you can tell us something about this experience, Margherita. Guido, uh, I remember a couple of episodes uh, related to my navigation. One uh, dates back uh, to 20 years ago when I started uh, offshore racing. Uh, we are also so seeing some pictures in background while, yeah, uh, while you yeah. talk and maybe uh, you can also comment some of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. here we were in Turkey and uh, mm -hmm. I dive to recover a, a fishing gear escaped. And my, my husband took some nice uh, picture of this. Uh, the, the subject is not uh, nice, but uh, the, the sea, you can see the sea crystalline and uh, the fishing stuff uh, floating uh, free uh, around. It's, it's unbelievable. Yeah. Anyway, one, uh, 20 years ago, I, I was uh, involved in a uh, sailing tour of Italy, Giro d'Italia Vela, organized by Cino Ricci. And uh, we finished the regatta earlier because there was no wind and the sea was completely flat. And uh, at the end of, uh, of a beautiful harbor in Puglia, I don't want to say the name, there were dozens of uh, black garbage uh, floating around. The terrible view surprised us uh, and saddened us uh, due to the human destruction of nature. But there was still no mention of the problem of microplastic uh, back then, which is a more serious, uh, totally invisible problem. Another time, you see the picture uh, at the beginning. Uh, we were uh, crossing the Atlantic on a 24 meter uh, cruise boat. And uh, we were in the middle of the ocean, in the middle of nowhere. And we heard the strange vibration of the propeller shaft. And the captain uh, immediately turned uh, the engine off uh, and he said uh, something got caught in the propeller. Uh, we took down the sail and luckily there was a little wind. And the captain dived uh, with the diving mask and the knife because he imagined. Uh, and there, there was a huge fishing net, uh, you can see. It's a really... This one that we can see now in this, in this picture. In this, in this picture. Abandoned in the sea. He dive uh, it over a couple of time and uh, and he cut the net, recovered it, and took it aboard, and, and then we left. But uh, it it is unbelievable how garbage move uh, around the world. Mm -hmm. uh, the immense the immense plastic island around the world testified this. Uh, they they are impressive. Uh, they, found that they have been identified, I think, six main one uh, plastic island. Mm, you, you, you can think, uh, just think uh, that it takes uh, from 100 to 1000 years to dispose of uh, plastic bottles, bags, uh, plates uh, and cups, yeah, yeah, or yeah. Uh, 1000 years a uh, polystyrene container, or uh, 4000 years for a glass bottle. Yeah. It's, it's really, it's really incredible. Giovanni, we have, uh, and Margita, we have really fantastic questions from uh, the audience. And so uh, I will maybe, uh, Pierre, make uh, another question to uh, Giovanni, and then maybe we can start looking at the question from, okay, because some of them are really, you know, in between a question and okay. pure oh, poetry. This one is funny. As Giovanni kids, <laughs> like, does your, does your work, uh, <laughs> Uh, allow you to have family. I think this is what our uh, friend from the uh, chat wanted to ask. So if your job can, you know, also be uh, accommodating a family somehow. 
But I don't know. <laughs> I try. <laughs> you don't know if you succeed. <laughs> you don't know if you have kids. <laughs> They are alive and uh, everything seems okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, Giovanni, uh, sorry for interrupting you earlier. I, yeah, that's, I mean, the same question um, I wanted to ask you is this, if you have any particular personal memory of uh, an event, a symbolic event that But, you well, experienced. Unluckily, I have uh, many, many, many symbolic events because oh. uh, in these years, uh, Uh, we start to have a lot of problem with the floating stuff around uh, in the water, especially when you go fast, so fast with a boat and you have uh, an impact. It's, 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 uh, it's very, it's, it's a big problem because if you, you know, if you're sailing at six knots and you have an impact, it's something, but if you're sailing at 30 knots and you have an impact, it's... Is, mm. is, is another problem. I mean, you, you make a damage very, very fast. And so, um, and so in these days, in, in these days is, is really a big problem when you go across an ocean uh, um, because uh, many, many times you have uh, uh, rubbish floating around. And, and so you have uh, also- Yeah, we're seeing some pictures. Dangerous impact with the boat. Mm. For example, uh, nets and uh, ropes, plastic ropes and stuff like that is, is very usual. Right. Yeah. You, you, you can find also, you know, a lot of lamps or any piece, uh, any plastic piece that is floating mm. can, can be found. And, and this year, for example, in... Uh, You know, last year in July, we have a, a huge impact with the Maserati Trimaran in mm -hmm. the Pacific Ocean. Ooh. And we lose, uh, we lose nearly probably 80 centimeter of the bow of the boat. I mean, we was like, the oh. boat was uh, completely destroyed by this uh, uh, element that was floating around. And we didn't see anything because it was completely... Uh, a dark night at two o'clock in the morning. Okay. But we was, you know, sailing at probably 25 to 30 knots of speed and we Ooh. just heard a, a huge shock. And uh, uh, after, after uh, we, we, we check all the boat and we recognize that the bow was yeah. completely yeah. destroyed and we lose a part of the radar. And yeah. so, yeah. It's just uh, an everyday problem, <laughs> oh. <laughs> unluckily. Mm. Uh, two years ago, during the, the, the record uh, Hong Kong to London, we, we lost uh, also a radar with an impact oh. and so on. I mean, it's, uh, this yeah. year in November, we, the boat yeah. was sailing at 30 knots and we just stopped in one second and it was a, a huge piece of plastic like uh, ropes and nets and stuff like that all uh, but was like 10 meters square oh. you know so it was probably one ton of plastic and the boat just stopped on that and uh, luck luckily we didn't have any big damage but So I mean, it can situation. be very dangerous, of course. It can be very, very dangerous. I mean, the, the, the situation is that you cannot anymore go around without worrying about uh, what is floating in the water. Right. It's crazy. It's crazy right. because 30 years ago was absolutely not like that. Yeah. That's the point. It's very fast. The, 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 the situation is, is, is very um, serious. Yeah. And, and, and the, 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 the amount of stuff is growing up very, very, very fast. Very, very I think it's really time to do something. And, and I'm sure that uh, we need to start from ourselves. We need to start to think about what you, we are consuming uh, because it's the only way. The Absolutely. only way is try to not consume plastic if it's not really necessary. necessary. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Giovanni. Uh, Guido, we have some questions, but maybe yeah. is there anything else you want uh, you want to ask 
Margarita? Or but I would I would say let's leave maybe the, the last question to the yeah. end if we have time because uh, I would like also to to read some of the yeah. questions from yeah. uh, from the public because they're really interesting. I try to put the two together. Okay, yeah, if, let, let's see if I'm able. So there is uh, um, who was uh, Paolo that was asking uh, to Giovanni if you prefer to sail uh, alone or with a crew, and uh, Mario that was doing a consideration that maybe. You can tell us if you share such consideration that sailing from a place to another sometimes means discovering a new world, new people. So sailing is connecting the world and connecting people in a slow way. But at the same time, sailing is the best interpretation of social distancing that we are experiencing today, just a mile out there in the sea and you are by yourself. So how do you leave actually sailing? Is it more a solo activity for you or is it more an activity that you like to share or is this and that no it's for sure it's this and that is the two things are very nice and very different because obviously when you're sailing alone you have a very deep relationship with your boat and with yourself for sure and probably also with the nature and with the life around you but when you are sitting with other people, you are a, a, a very deep relationship with the other people. So it's, there, it's very, very interesting too. It's just two, two, two things uh, that I love to do. Just sitting alone or sitting with a crew is, uh, is yeah. very nice uh, either. Yeah. And Giovanni, we have another question from uh, Fred Di Valli, who's asking an interesting question in my view, and it's, while you are racing during, you know, sea races, uh, is the crew usually careful about sea pollution? Meaning, are you recycling on board? So are racing, sailing boats recycled after use? <laughs> it's a bit... Uh... But obviously you cannot recycle, but uh, <laughs> obviously you are worrying about sea pollution, absolutely. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the boat, sailing boat is like the world. Is a little world where you have all kinds of problems, yeah. exactly the same problem they are in the world. <laughs> yeah. The only big difference is that in a sailing boat, I am the boss, so I can do something. <laughs> so basically, well, the, the energy is a problem because yeah. energy that means everything in a boat. You, you, with the energy, you can uh, make water to drink, for example. Uh, with the energy, you, 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 you are able to run all the instruments, the computers and stuff, etc. So it's very important to produce energy in a, in a clean way. So, for example, with a solar panel or stuff like that. Yes. But also it's very important not to consume too much energy. And so it's very important to have uh, LED lights and all the the help that the, the, the modern age give us to, to consume in a, in a smart way. And at the same time, rubbish is a big problem. So it's very important to, to do the tree, to not have a lot of packaging, not, not have a lot of plastic. And so to buy product with a smart packaging and, and so on, you know, there is a lot of, a lot of, uh, uh, things that you can do and for sure when you're sailing and you live a lot of time in a sailing boat you learn a lot how to not consume uh, how to live with a, a little bit amount of energy yeah. and how to live with a little bit amount of rubbish too yes sure sure thank you Giovanni so Guido okay. maybe we could ask uh, a question. We, yeah, we yeah. Question I would you. like to try this again. Let's see if I'm able, Pierre, yeah. to put sure. together again the two questions. Oh, one yeah. from uh, Paolo Rotoni and the other from uh, uh, Teodora. Okay. Uh, the two questions are, uh, Paolo is asking, uh, Margarita, if you had uh, 1 million euros, you know, to contribute to save the world, where would you invest in which initiative? And Teodora is asking, practically speaking, what can we do starting from uh, tomorrow in order to reduce, uh, let's say, our impact on the seas? I think the, the, the two, you know, can be combined a little bit. What do you think, Margarita? 
I think uh, we have to understand that we are in a linear economy. That means uh, we take a resource from the ground to make products which we use, and when we no longer want them, uh, throw them away. Then uh, take, make, waste, uh, you know, uh, the, this is the linear economy. But we, we need to understand to enter in a new circular economy. For example, my dad, when he was born in the, um, he was born in the era of wooden boats, and then fiberglass boats arrived. But no one wondered how to recycle them at the end of their life. This is the problem. And now uh, we need to solve this. Then yeah. um, there is a new way to design, make, and use things uh, within planetary boundaries. And other things uh, that uh, my, my dad uh, told me, the new generation is educated uh, to respect in the sea and, and the planet are receptive and ready to change. And then uh, this is also a challenge to try to educate the fut future generation to a different uh, awareness uh, to doing something that is important to educate uh, the children at school. Um, and also um, um, every sailor like uh, Giovanni or me or my father should become ambassador for the healthy and clean sea and um, in generally all, all the mother earth. Uh, during the race uh, um, around the world, the sailor uh, reaches places that are far away from the usual commercial route. Uh, then they often, uh, they are the only witnesses uh, uh, of what the situation is in isolated uh, and extreme places then uh, we should let people know our and their experience and uh, our love for the sea. And um, we are all concerned about the, the health of this element, uh, which gave birth to life uh, and which uh, our lives uh, depend. Thank you. Thank you, Margherita. Uh, Pierre, if you agree, I would like to, to make a, maybe a last question to the both. That is the one by Bernardo Bernardini yes. uh, that you can read maybe in the, in the chat with me. So okay. uh, you are both uh, public figures, uh, Margherita, Giovanni. So you have also a public dimension, but you are also people that go to sail to remain, you know, uh, by your own. So how do you keep together <laughs> these two parts? So... For example, managing your social media, social media. Uh, is it something that you leave as an opportunity or a burden, something that, oh my God, I have to, you know, uh, publish a new story in Instagram and I really don't want to do that. <laughs> How do you leave this, this fact, Giovanni? Giovanni, you are very active. Normal. I mean, really, no stress. <laughs> Let's say that. <laughs> <laughs> and no I know very well that is part of my job and I'm also happy to to have a lot of people who follow me and to that they follow the boat and what we do and uh, I think the, the new era and the, the, the modern uh, era uh, with the social media and internet and everything help a lot us to to be able to yes to to share the, the, what we do and to share with, uh, with a lot of people in direct uh, mode, you know. Before, when I start this job, when I start to do my first round the world, for example, mm. well, internet was not there. Mm. And, uh, and so you was sharing your experience and your story just through the newspaper. Okay. And, uh, I think that's uh, social media and internet is a great opportunity to to do it uh, uh, more direct. Yeah, so please keep posting. Please keep posting, Giovanni, because we're all following you. Uh, Margherita, you are also a copywriter, so how do you leave this dimension you know, of also, you know, navigating and surfing online? <laughs> yeah. At the beginning, I, I didn't like too much. Uh, when uh, I spent um, 10, 12 years on board, I was isolated and I love my, my, my life uh, without uh, social media. But now I, I see also um, from my father, uh, is, like, like Giovanni says, it's a great opportunity. 
uh, you can, be, can become ambassador of important message and uh, it's great for me i'm i'm a copywriter and now i'm working in uh, i'm editor in a website uh, barcavela.it directed by marco nannini and uh, i interview many sellers uh, and uh, i think all the experience of these people can inspire can inspire uh, can inspire us can inspire me can inspire a new generation because the the life close to nature is um, is important and uh, in the city we we lost a little bit uh, this dimension mm. then um, uh, I, I can see the importance of the, the social media uh, management uh, and um, we, we can use uh, for positive message. Then, um, thank you. Thank you, Margherita, because this is also the message of our project in Novamare, that is to use the technology in an intelligent way to help saving our seas because at the end, as the manifesto of the Barcolana Cinquanta by Marina Abramovic was saying last year, at the end, we are all navigating in the, the same boat. So I would like to uh, uh, take advantage of these, uh, uh, of these uh, nice uh, sentence to uh, thank you all. Thank you, Margarita, for being uh, with us it has been a great pleasure to have you as a as a thank guest you. and thank you thank also you. giovanni for being uh, uh, with us we had some technical issues until uh, <laughs> until 4 and 59 tonight and then we were able <laughs> we were to solve so. such issues at 500 it was incredible so really? let me thank let me thank also the control room by the university of padova <laughs> that is managing uh, everything and let me remind uh, to all of you that uh, tomorrow evening we will complete these are six webinars, three in the morning and three in the evening. And tomorrow evening, we'll have the last pop meeting that will keep together three other guests. And here I'm asking to the control room in Padova if they can share the manifesto for tomorrow evening, because tomorrow we will see also, let's say, the economic side of the uh, sustainability. And we will have one first guest from that we all know in Trieste, that is uh, Andrea Illi. Andrea Illi is not only the, the, the CEO of uh, Illi Cafe, but is also the president of the Illi Foundation. And the Illi Foundation is uh, investing a lot uh, in the attempt, uh, let's say, to improve and uh, to reduce our impact in this world. But there will be also other guests. I don't want to anticipate too much what are the guests. If you're curious, go in units.it slash Innovamare and sign up for tomorrow evening. Pierre, on your side. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Giovanni. It was a big pleasure. Thanks, Margherita, of course. And uh, yeah, big opportunity for us to talk to people like you. And uh, yeah, also uh, I want to thank all the, you know, control room, Mara Contardo, of course, for all the very, very big, great, great work done. And thank you, Guido. Thank, uh, thank you, Guido, for this beautiful opportunity. Perfect. And see you tomorrow evening. See yeah. you tomorrow evening. Uh, with thank you very much, everybody. Pop yeah. meeting. Thank you. Uh, and thanks bye the bye audience. Bye. <laughs> Buon vento, buon vento a tutti, buon vento a tutti. Buon vento. Bye bye. Ciao. Bye bye. bye, bye.